told me on it's it's just back on the YouTube page on my side. Okay. Uh, hey, everybody. Hello. I see that we have 34 people watching now. That's exciting. Uh, and And I briefly need to just like remind myself that this is on like a 20 second delay and mute the audio on the YouTube tab I have open in my browser so that I don't hear myself on that loop. I hope you're having a great evening. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started shortly. And since I have been vamping for time for like roughly a minute because I had to remember that whole that whole deal. Jen, should we go ahead and get started? Awesome. And like, if you want to go on, oh yeah, there you, there you are. Hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, let's, uh, so let's go ahead and get started. This is how to, how to mystery hunt, uh, 2023. Uh, I am Ben Smith. I am the captain of palindrome. My pronouns are he, him. Uh, Jen, I cannot hear you. Hi. Uh, I am Jen McTagg. Um, I was on Palindrome, um, and uh, now this year I'm on uh, a team called the MIT Mystery Hunt Verified Checkmark. Um, and uh, I use she, her pronouns. That's fun. I love that team name. So I, I guess a question while we're still on this slide is, why are we here? Uh, and the answer to that is, so Palindrome ran MIT Mystery Hunt in January. And as part of sort of our the the closing out of our duties, we were very glad to do the traditional how do you do mystery hunt thingy. Uh, there are a couple other beautifully recorded versions of this online. Jen, I believe you have a link to those somewhere that will be out there in the world soon. Uh, but yeah, those already exist online. If you want to hear even more people with even more experience about the MIT mystery hunt talk about this, those exist. Uh, but in particular, we wanted to make sure that new solvers have info on what to expect, what tools are available, and how to hunt safely, especially now that we are going to be back in person on campus. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and kick things off by by answering the question, what is the mystery hunt? Sort of the, the day, you, you, you may be David Byrne in this situation, you may be asking yourself, how did I get here? Uh, but yeah, what is the mystery hunt anyways? Uh, like there, there are lots of things that define the mystery hunt. Like I have in a very loving way, uh, called it thousands of people descending onto MIT's campus to do competitive spreadsheets. Uh, but honestly, it is a bunch of super smart, super creative people just sort of coming together to just be smart and creative and share this super crazy nerdy thing that we love with one another. Uh, this started in at MIT in 1983. Uh, it was one sheet of paper front and back. Uh, it's now many more sheets of paper. I don't know. I didn't print out our hunt. I don't know how, how many trees we killed. Uh, but it's like it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 160, 200 puzzles. 
but it's always about finding a coin on MIT's campus. The term coin is stretchable and in many years has not actually been like a physical coin. Ours was a physical coin. Uh, but generally, the the many, many puzzles that pop up are, are rounds of puzzles, sort of like 13-ish puzzles, sometimes more, sometimes less. You can really do a lot with that, each of which has an associated meta puzzle. If you're not familiar with the term meta puzzle, don't worry. We have a whole section on that later. Uh, whoever wins the hunt, whoever finds the location of that coin, uh, the prize is that you run the next hunt. Uh, and just an important note is that Part of the cool part about running hunt is that you can kind of change anything you want about MIT mystery hunt. And Jen and I are not privy to what teammate who won this year's hunt is going to be doing next January. Uh, we know nothing about what's happening at next year's hunt. We don't know the format. We don't know the content, et cetera. We, we are just deep enthusiasts of this weird and crazy thing. And with that, uh, let's talk about puzzles. Jen, I'm going to hand it over to you. Okay, so um, the thing about Puzzle Hunt puzzles is that um, a lot of them are going to be like puzzles that you've solved in other places. Uh, there'll be some that look like crosswords. There'll be some that look like uh, uh, word searches or Sudoku. And there will be some that are just wildly different, um, just all sorts of just like random stuff on the page. But one thing is true. Every puzzle solves to an English word or phrase. Okay, well, except for the time the answers were all emoji, uh, and except the time that the answers were all pictures, and except the time the answers were all tasks you had to complete, and except the time that all the answers were physical objects, you know what, uh, sorry, most of the time, the puzzle solved to an English word or phrase. And that's actually a good thing to note for this entire presentation. This entire presentation is most of the time because puzzle hunters uh, and puzzle creators like to show off that they can do weird things. Um, but the vast majority of the time you are looking for an English word or phrase. So how do you solve a puzzle? Well, we need to talk about the puzzler's ISIS, not any of the other meanings of the word ISIS. This was coined in 2010 by Foggy Broom and uh, who is also a member of Palindrome. Um, and it is uh, a way of looking at puzzles. Um, and uh, ISIS stands for Identify, Sort, Index, Solve. Um, so in Identify, you figure out what the puzzle is about. Um, sort uh, is how you, uh, what order things are in and how do you need to order them. Uh, indexing is how are you getting an answer out of this. Uh, and solve is how much work do I still need to do? Um, now, in the past, there have been puzzles that were pretty strict ISIS. You identified something, you then figured out how to sort, you then figured out how to index, and then you solved it, maybe doing the, uh, another step. Um, those puzzles are not nearly as common um, as, they, uh, as they were back in the early uh, 2010s uh, and 2000s, uh, but they're still very helpful to think about. And so we are gonna talk a little bit about uh, these, um, but we're gonna, we're gonna do things maybe a little bit different. Uh, in particular, uh, as, as Ben mentioned, there are lots of other, uh, there are lots of other, well, there's three other videos about this how to hunt. And so the one thing that we're gonna do a little bit different with this is that um, it's pretty easy to run through all the different steps of a puzzle, but in this one, we're going to try to show you how to think about the puzzles and in particular what goes on in your brain as you're trying to solve one of these because otherwise it, it seems fairly opaque. And the first puzzle we're going to talk about is uh, Teach Us Amelia Bedelia, which was from our hunt last year. It looks like this. Hopefully that works on the stream. Uh, well, we'll see if it shows up. Anyway, I hope it works. So. Uh, so Teach Us Amelia Bedelia is, um, it is a puzzle. If it's not showing up there, then it will, you'll see it on here. But basically, it has, an, it has a title, Teach Us Amelia Bedelia. It has a flavor text. Uh, as usual, Amelia takes things literally when following orders, blah, 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 blah. And then the puzzle content. There is also a uh, answer uh, blank for you to submit answers. And then, well, there's not a solution. Um, like normally during the hunt, but that's because it's in the archives. Uh, in addition, there's often a copy to clipboard button at the bottom right um, that can be used to copy a lot of the data uh, onto the clipboard. Um, it is, yeah, 
uh, so that's what the page looks like. So this is everything interesting. Uh, the outside borders were part of that round of puzzles. Okay, so. All right, so the first thing is identify. What are the important parts of this puzzle? And I'm going to notice a couple things. The first is there are some parts of the text that seem to be emph emphasized. So like pomp partner, German, German, replacement, daylight. These all uh, have been emphasized for a reason. So they're clearly important. There's also these numbers at the end of each paragraph. We have 12 here for pomp partner, 7 for German, German. 10 for replacement, 8 for daylight. Like these numbers clearly mean something. Don't know what yet, but they're clearly important. There's these weird pictures. Actually, on the puzzle itself, you can click on these pictures and it shows up a slightly bigger version of them. So uh, clearly the details in these pictures are going to matter. There's this overall presentation. Our theme last year was books and children's literature. and uh, But none of the other puzzles were presented in a book like this. So why is this one? There's these underscores with a five on the bottom uh, right, which also is uh, important. And then also, like, maybe the rest of this text, like, why is this not just pomp partner? Why is this originally this task? Blah, 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 blah. So we've got some things to think about. These are the th first thing that I'm doing is I'm looking and trying to find all of the weird stuff. So, uh... So then when you're looking at a puzzle, you're going to say, all right, what is something that I know how to do? What is something that I can, you know, or at least that I think I know how to do? I could start trying something immediately. And the first thing for me is that these, these things look like crossword clues in a way. And in fact, my first instinct with Pomp Partner is that, well, Pomp in a, a pomp partner, uh, in a crossword clue, partner often means like something that normally goes with pomp. And you think pomp and, well, the only place I know pomp from is circumstance. And here's an interesting thing, is that circumstance is exactly 12 letters long. Well, that's fascinating. Um, so that means that these numbers are likely an enumeration. And in fact, oftentimes when you see numbers in parentheses, you're looking for it to be an enumeration. Um, so an enumeration, as said in this box, describes the length of the words. So uh, palm partner is going to be one word that is 12 letters long, and circumstance is, in fact, that. Um, so I'm going to look for a couple more of these. I'm going to solve a couple more of these clues just to see what I can, you know, what I can get. I'm just going to look for the easy ones. So government complaints advocate is pretty is a is a pretty straightforward definition for ombudsman. Where you'll find an arch, well, you know, there's a lot of different answers here, but the fact is we know this has to be two words. The first one is two letters, the second one's five, and it's probably a place. I'm thinking St. Louis. And the third is uh, uh, Peter Schaefer play. And I don't know anything about Peter Schaefer plays. I don't know, whatever. Um, but Google does. And remember, you have access to Google. You have access to all sorts of resources. Um, Pretty much anything goes except literally going to ask another team. Um, so, uh, or hacking the hacking the hunt. Yeah, website. yeah. Well, and I think it's worth noting is that hunt likes to go deep and can go deep in knowledge. So, like Google is your friend. Absolutely. So the Peter Schaefer play. Um, I Google listed Peter Schaefer plays, and it turns out that only one of them is five letters, and it's Equus. I probably should have figured out how to pronounce that word before now, but Equus. And here's the thing. I'm going to stop when I get to Equus, because why is Equus in this? That's such a weird word. If if the puzzle author didn't have to put this in, they wouldn't. But, like, why would they have put such a weird word that had to be clued via the Peter Schaefer play? Well, all right, so the first thing that indicates to me is like Peter Schaefer, sorry, the Equus here has two U's in it. And I'm like, okay, maybe double letters, but then I go look at these others, and I'm pretty happy with Circumstance, Ombudsman, and St. Louis. So uh, it's probably not double letters, but I'm like, okay, what if it's just because of the U? Um, then 
uh, you know, we have a U in St. Louis, a U in Ombudsman, and a U in Circumstance. Okay, but then I start looking around the U, let's say all of you, and I notice that there's this U and an S here. Right, U and S, U and S, U and S. Interesting. It seems like each one of these has a U and then an S uh, with a letter in the middle. Well, that's fascinating. And it gets me thinking, like, that's a fascinating property. Why Why this specific? And why is it U and S? Because then you have to, you know, there's going to obviously be some very weird letters in there. And that's when I start putting things together. Like, the U-S, almost like there were letters inside us in some way. The, ta the text keeps describing tasks, like... You know, it mentions tasks in the flavor text. Originally, this task, relaxing after finishing this task, during this task. Um, and then f the flavor, it's the name of the game. What game? Um, and uh, those bookmarks. I mean, like, those bookmarks. What? That, that reminds me of something. It just, it reminds me of something. Right. Among Us. In fact... The reason why it's U blank S is because you could literally, those letters are literally among us. So, uh, we have now identified the theme. This is an among us puzzle. And that's good. We have figured out, you know, oftentimes in a puzzle, it may not be obvious initially what it the topic is. But once you figure out the topic, then you're you're ready to keep rolling. This is good. This is, this is a good thing. And the... Um, U blank S is a really good confirmer um, uh, in that, you know, once you get the Among Us, aha, it's very clear that you're on the right track. So uh, let's go to those clues. And in fact, um, identifying clues is something that, you know, in this case, lots and lots of people can do. Um, if you're not sure what to do with uh, when you're solving a puzzle, often helping helping to identify clues is incredibly important. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do this together as a chat. Um, so I have posted all of the clues here. Um, so remember, all of these clues have to have U blank S in them. And they have to be the exact uh, um, enumeration. Um, so for instance, German, German has to be seven. Pharmacy has to be nine. And so what you need to do is uh, in the chat, if you think you know one of these, you can type the number in brackets and then indicate what your um, word is. Uh, and if it's correct, like if you said Deutsch, which I just revealed because I went on here and I forgot how this works, um, then uh, we will reveal it. Can you so. make the spreadsheet a little bit bigger while we wait for the 20 seconds for chat to catch up with us? Yeah. That was maybe a little bit too big. Oh, we got a Tulsa for 11. That is absolutely correct. Ooh, we have another Tulsa for 11. Tulsa is happy to be that popular. I am seeing nine SUVs. Oh, yep, that is correct. Jen is the romance language Portuguese. Uh, I believe it. Uh, yes, it is. Pharmacy is drugstore. Absolutely. Twelve is ahas. Uh Thirteen sunshine. Fifteen virtuoso. Virtuoso. Uh, Thirteen is not sunshine. Thirteen is not sunshine. Uh, four oh, pursued. That would... uh, okay, so four is pursued. They're that is coming correct. in fast and furious. Russian roulette is there. Oh, sunshine. Uh, sunshine is daylight. It's eight, not fourteen. Aha. Uh, virtuoso is correct.
I'm like looking through tennis squash. Yeah. What is often fun if you have a lot of people working on one of these at once uh, is that we will have a, a phenomenon called spreadsheet locusts, where all of a sudden, like, there are like 20 colored rectangles and they're all over the place, uh, just filling in things. Um, very fun. Uh, upscale, I believe, is correct. Yeah, it's correct. I could just do it on here. Why am I not doing it on there? The solver is acting like a beautiful swarm of piranhas just like descending on a cow that has been lowered into the tank. Substitute. I was wondering how long that was going to take to crack. Yeah. Uh, so we got the city mentioned in a Beatles song uh, and songs on the OCC top 100. Oh, Ooh, we, we have row that. 18 UK singles. Yeah. UK singles. And 10 is Tucson. That is everything. Now, note that you don't necessarily need to get every single clue in the puzzle in order to uh, in order to solve it. But it's fun to do. So, you know, um, and especially in this one, it's not that bad uh, to, to try to get all of them. So. Um, so now we want to go to these pictures. And so here's the thing. These pictures are clearly Photoshopped in some way. Um, they've clearly been image manipulated and they have. Um, uh, and, and so the, the person is explicitly trying to convey something. And so um, let's so I probably can't just like identify this image off right off the bat, but I could I could put some parts together. So for instance, in this one, I reversed image search. If you've never used uh, reversed image search uh, before, it's really good in the hunt. In fact, um, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, we'll find out, but uh, in Google um, Chrome, there is a, oh, it's not showing up on here. Huh, there is a search uh, with Google Lens, which is a godsend. Uh, but so I, I, I reverse image search and this is Stan from South Park. Like I knew it was from South Park, but I don't watch it. I don't know what character it is. And like this whole thing kind of reminds me of a Google form. And I see that there's a mouse pointer clicking on here. So I'm thinking that like this is submit. So I am thinking that this is some sort of combination of Stan and submit, but I'm not sure what. Um, and then I could take a look at this next one. Uh, and again, reverse image search uh, to confirm. I had a guess, and I confirmed that this is a Swiper from Dora the Explorer. And I can't quite tell what this is. It's a hose or a cord, um, something along those lines. So like Swiper, hose, or swipe cord, or something. I don't know, some combination of that. It's trying to play around. And like for me, eventually... Um, and, and I'm going off of solving this because even though this is from our hunt, I didn't write this. Uh, I didn't edit it. I test solved it. So I got to go through the same solving process. Um, and I think like swipe cord, uh, that sounds familiar from an Among Us perspective. And then it's like, oh, yeah, wait, these are very close to tasks from Among Us. So submit stan is real close to submit scan. And swipe cord is real close to swipe card. So these are all images that indicate a, uh, these are all images that uh, indicate among us tasks, one letter off. Uh, I could see why people would think that is a tire, by the way. Um, it does look like one, but when you zoom in a bunch, then you can start to see the individual uh, um, parts of the cord slash hose. So, okay, so now I know that every single one of these pictures is uh, is similar to, is one letter off of a task. And so now what we would do is go through the list of tasks. Um, and by we, I mean you, because once again, uh, this is honestly very fun uh, to do. So I'm going to move this up one so uh, the, since the pictures are kind of small, we have provided you with a bigger version of the pictures at this site. Um, 
And once again, if you think you know uh, the fake task, you can uh, you can. Um, sorry, I got distracted by the lack of a tire joke. That's very very good. Um, uh, anyway, you can click on here and see the pictures. And if you think you know one, uh, please feel free to put it in chat again. And like, don't be afraid to uh, research. I think I did. I put the link at the top of this document. I forget. I made it like three weeks ago. I did put a wiki list link to the wiki list. So like, feel free to look through that as well. And now we just hang out and wait for chat to catch up. Yeah. We don't have that many of these interactive ones, but uh, uh, we wanted to give people, a, a, you know, at least a little bit of interactiveness because it's fun. Like, mm -hmm. this is honestly funny to do. Like, as soon as you start recognizing them, they are very, very funny. Uh, yeah, we got an upload uh, Dota to upload data. Yeah. Excellent. We are off. Lick or safe to lock safe. Lick safe to lock safe. Uh, okay, so it's going to end up being uh, unlick safe to unlock safe, uh, but it's going to be irrelevant for the puzzle. Um, I, if you had done lick safe to lock safe, it would also work. Make burger. Yeah, it was good. Um, yep, it is make burgers to Mike burger. Excellent. Nice job, Hannah Perry. People frantically looking through them. Rewind tapes, rewind tails. Excellent. Nice job. We uh, reset that one. Um, when we were solving this, uh, as, at least on test solving, um, uh, I remember like every time someone came up with figured out one of the ones, the entire Discord call would just start cracking up. It was really funny. I think my favorite is uh, eight. Eight is definitely my favorite. Start fans from fins. Yep. Uh, pick up towels. Pick up vowels. I definitely remember that one. Uh, that nope, it's this row. Uh, and then price shields. Yep. Uh, note that we didn't get enumerations for this, but we also didn't need it because we could just. You know, we have the canonical versions, uh, uh, names of the tasks. They're on the the wiki page, um, and we all we're doing is changing one letter. So, uh, yeah. Also, note that while Among Us knowledge helps with this puzzle, certainly it will help or to make the aha on un, uh, you know on swipe cord to swipe card. Um, or, you know, uh, what was the other one? Submit stand to submit scan. Uh, you don't need it, right? Like, in the end, as long as you can, rec as long as someone on your team can recognize among us. Ah, uh, yes, Matt has got uh, fix weather nude, which is my favorite. Um, as long as one person on your team can uh, get the aha, then it's unlocked for the entire team, right? You only need one person on your team to recognize it. And then everyone's like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And then you can start searching and and you are often on um, all sorts of, um, you're often on all sorts of weird wikis. I, I remember one time and I'm going to add in stab boarding pass and stare artifacts because they should both be correct. Um, 
uh, there was a puzzle that required me going to the Glee wiki. Um, oh, I think we actually have it as Scarboarding Pass, but that's fine. Do that there. Yeah, Scarboarding Pass. There we go. Um, stair artifacts. Um, one time we had to go to the Glee uh, wiki, uh, and I uh, I immediately uh, cleared my browsing history because I did not want that in my uh, search results. Uh, Prime shields, the price shields we've got. We've got a couple more. Again, you wouldn't necessarily need to uh, process data to process data. Yep. You wouldn't necessarily need to solve all of these um, in order to get the get the answer. Um, one of the things um, that we'll talk about is not necessarily needing all of them, but you know we'll give it uh, we'll give it a little bit longer to see if people can get the last five. Is that remember? Oh, soot records. There we go. It's the one I was on. In fact. Okay, so not call. Yes, incognito mode exists. I did not know about it at the time. Bud beverage to buy beverage is not 17, but it sounds right. Yeah, it's 16. There we go. Oh, I switched 16 and 17 on my uh on my thing. Ah, whatever. Oh yeah, these are these are four hard ones. Uh measure weather. Yeah, measure weather. Um so yeah, we'll give another 30 seconds and then kind of move on from there. I was about to say, given the lag, let's maybe just call it now. Okay. Oh, yeah. I forgot about lag. I forgot how lag works. Okay. So, um, yeah, this is the idea. Again, like this is definitely, I would, uh, I would, I would be very confident at this point in um, uh, my ability to solve this puzzle with the information that was presented here. Um, so, anyway. All right, so what's going on? So first of all, why is the puzzle in this order? That's my first question. Why is the puzzle in this order? And I'm going to look to see if there is anything in order. And uh, I notice that uh, the uh, these answers, right, the crossword clues, they're in alphabetical order. Um, so... Clearly, this was done in order to do alphabetical. And in fact, this is something that we may have noticed while trying to solve them to help, you know, get which exact romance language or um, maybe which city mentioned in a Beatles song. You could you could sort of uh, narrow it down. OK, so uh, now when you see something in alphabetical order, that often means this puzzle is in the wrong order. You need to change it. Um, that uh, um, alphabetical order, it's a, a nothing up my sleeve order, right? Like, we didn't put any tricks in this. It's it's in an order. You've got to you've got to change it. Okay, so now we gotta we gotta reorder it. And so there's a couple of places to look. Is there in any any inherent ordering involved in this data set? So the first thing I'm gonna look for is to see if there's any inherent ordering in the tasks in Among Us. Um, and uh, as soon as I do that, I'm going to start noticing that it's just no, <laughs> no. The the tasks come from all four different maps. They, uh, you know, some are on some maps, some are on the other. Uh, so then there's the, is there any information that we haven't used yet? And there is some information we haven't used yet, but none of it is a really good ordering mechanism. But also we got three new streams of data. Our three new streams of data, we got the, the letters from uh, Among Us. We got the letter that was added to the fake clue. And we got the letter that was deleted from the real uh, from the real task, the fake task and the real task. 
So each one of these is a um, uh, each one of these is potential information stream. And so the question is, can I order any of them? Well, I'm probably not ordering by the fake letter because there's CC here, right? I wouldn't know how to order these two um, columns. And in fact, I wouldn't in the real letter, I wouldn't know how to order it because of this AA, right? And there's also other things. There's actually A, 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 this four A's, like that's just terrible for ordering. But the clue letters, well, there's no duplicates here. And when I see something that doesn't have any duplicates, I am immediately suspicious of it being an order. Immediately. Because that makes it really easy to order by. So, we can order by that. Great. All right. We found a potential ordering. I don't know if it works yet. But in order to figure out if it works, then uh, we have to uh, index. Although, actually, one person may note, oh, yeah, this makes sense. The first letters of each of the task descriptions spell order by letters among us, which is another way you could get the whole among us uh, connection in the first place. Um, you will not often be told the ordering just from the first letters of things, but it was in this case. Okay, so indexing. So first of all, there is the traditional method of indexing. Um, indexing is when you get a number and a, and a phrase and you take that number letter of the word. So for instance, if you had among us and three, you would count one, two, three, and get this O. Um, so indexing is very common. Um, it is uh, a very uh, flexible puzzle um, mechanic. So if we take a look, is there anything that we can use as an index? And I mean, unfortunately, we have kind of used all the numbers except for that five in the bottom right. And I mean, we could try to index five into everything and it's not gonna work out that well. But is there anything we haven't used yet? Again, we have the clue letters, the fake letters and the real letters. Well, actually, hold on. We said we we're gonna order, we we're gonna sort by the index or sort by the clue letters, let's do that. And so I, you know, I basically take my spreadsheet and I sort by the clue letters. And then, uh. You know, I'm looking to see if anything is, and I get like, oh, hey, look at this actor who voiced uh, Kuil. Okay, most of that is English. And some of you are probably yelling at me because I probably once again mispronounced this. Um, uh, but it's totally rec reasonable not to recognize this, uh, that this is a, uh, you know, you see Google Kuil. And, um, uh, it turns out that it is a character from uh, the S Star Wars universe. I probably should have put it on the slide so I didn't have to try to remember it. Uh, and you get that it was by Nick Nolte. Um, this kind of uh, um, this kind of construct is called a clue phrase. Oftentimes, puzzles uh, will want to make themselves slightly longer, um, and so they will use a clue phrase instead of a um, uh, use a clue phrase instead of just giving you the answer. Sometimes you'll spell out the answer right there, but sometimes you'll just have to get a clue phrase and then have to solve that uh, part. So uh, I'm being told that it is the Mandalorian. Okay, excellent. So now the question is, all right, well, so then the actor is Nick Nolte, right? But the problem is, is that Nick Nolte doesn't quite work. Names in particular can be a little troublesome because sometimes people want the full name and sometimes people want the last name. A good default is the last name only, but this puzzle does clarify. That's what this blank five is. It tells us that after our clue phrase, our final answer is going to be five letters long. And so we're gonna want just Nolte. Um, so sometimes it will be very obvious with the puzzle uses all last names of people or their full names of people. Um, or they're just their first names, it could be. Um, but sometimes you just need to put in twice, put it in twice and see what happens. And there is no penalty for guessing. Well, if you guess a lot of times in a short amount of time period, there may be um, uh, rate limiting. Um, but you don't like lose points or, or, you know, anything. So feel free to guess. All right. Uh, so kind of like breaking it down in this in this flow chart we started with solving the crossword clues 
We then went to identify the Among Us theme. We used that to go back and solve more crossword clues. From there, we solved the pictures. From there, we sorted by the U.S. U blank S letters. From there, we read off the fake letters. And from there, we figured out the clue phrase. Okay, well, so here's the problem. Um, much like uh, just me as, in per as a person, puzzle solving is not that straight. Um, so in reality, when you're solving this puzzle, it might actually look a little bit something like this. See, we had to actually present it as this kind of like, here's one thing after another, because oftentimes in a in a puzzle hunt, you're just jumping between the different things. Like you might be working on the crossword clues and solving the pictures and figuring out the sort orders and and recognizing the the what order it's actually in. You may be doing this all at once. Um, and uh, while that is a true representation of how puzzle hunting works, it is not uh, good for presenting how puzzles work. So um, this was me sitting down with a flow chart and trying to figure out what are all the different connections that one could possibly make. Um, and so uh, you could start at any one of these and, and jump around from the different uh, from place to place. All of the and and quite frankly, you may have multiple people going off into doing this and recognizing different things, and it, it gets very wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. Um, Matt, I agree. There is the wildly useless direction. We're gonna get to some fun uh, discussions about that in our next puzzle, but we're gonna take a moment and just pause because I have I have thrown a lot out there. Um, and uh, we're just going to give a pause for, for questions. Um, if anybody has any questions about what just happened, about some of the techniques uh, that we use, um, or other questions about the, that puzzle in general. Yes, arrows pointing off to the left. The thing is, I will say that you, uh, one thing that I, I I have learned from my year of writing mystery hunt puzzles for the for the 2022 hunt is that you never can predict what wrong answers people are going to find or what wrong directions people are going to find. Um, yeah, there were some... Uh, like you can think. try to build a better mousetrap, but it turns out that like you are building a better mousetrap for like the most expert set of mice. Yeah. <laughs> Quite literally for star rats, actually. All right. I was I was thinking that. OK. Um, so uh, I'm going to uh, we're going to keep going. Um, I, I waited a little bit for the, the delay, but if you have questions, if you have questions at any point, please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, yeah. OK. So uh, not every puzzle is an ISIS puzzle, but every puzzle can benefit from the questions that ISIS makes you ask. Um, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the Amelia Bedelia puzzle, um, not every you know puzzle, uh, this was, sorry, this was very common. This is, by the way, I'm a teacher. This is how I speak while teaching. So, you know, what you're getting is just like pure unadulterated gen right now. Um, so uh, at the beginning of the of the Amelia Bedelia, I said, you know, I said that ISIS, uh, strict ISIS puzzles was a framework. And like that was a little bit off of an ISIS puzzle, but was essentially an, a, an ISIS puzzle. But it was one of the only like strict ISIS puzzles we had over the entire uh, hunt last year. And it was near the beginning because ISIS puzzles tend to be a little bit easier uh, than others. Um, and so, uh, because uh, hunters are generally used to the framework. So while uh, a lot of the puzzles that may come up are not ISIS puzzles, but there are certain questions that ISIS makes you think about that every puzzle will benefit. So identify what is this puzzle about? What is the what is the important part of this puzzle, and what are the individual important uh, things that are going to be data? Excuse me. 
sort. How do I have to order this puzzle? Right? What order is it in? Where is the where is the ordering coming from? Index, how am I taking my giant spreadsheet of data and getting an answer out of it? And then solve, how much work do I need to do to actually get that answer? And what's the final step? What's the final thing going to be? Is it going to just spit out the answer? Or am I going to have to take what the puzzle does and do it again? That is a very common one. But we're gonna we're gonna talk about this in a puzzle that is not really an ISIS puzzle. It has, but it benefits from these questions. And that is. Harold and the Purple Crayon. So we're going to bring this over. Harold and the Purple Crayon. So once again, here is the puzzle. And it consists of a title. Uh, again, your submission box uh, right here. Um, then you have uh, um, colors sometimes have strange names. Uh, but Harold uses the more familiar versions to reorganize his crayons, the ones he can fit into his box, that is. All right, cool. And then the puzzle content is this picture that consists of 20 small pictures and then nothing else. We don't even get a copy to clipboard because we can copy it all by just right clicking. And in fact, we can click on it to get a bigger version. So yeah, cool. Uh, okay, so. First, again, I'm going to identify what's important. So I noticed that there's a lot of purple, right? Everything, you know, Harold's in, if you go back and look at the book, Harold is drawn the way uh, that he normally is. And then everything else is in purple. And that's the style of the book. Except that there is one question, uh, sorry, one color in uh, that is not purple in each of these different uh, boxes. So that's clearly important. What each picture is uh, depicting is also clearly important. These pictures are not random. Um, and they do look like they're cluing specific things. So that's that's pretty important. And then the flavor text, there's some interesting um, uh, phrases in here. Oftentimes, you can take a look at the flavor text and go, what words was the author trying to put in this? Now, this will vary from team to team. Palindrome, I think, was a little bit heavier on flavor text than uh, than some other teams. I don't know what teammate is like. I should probably go try to solve the recent teammate hunt and find that out, but whatever. So I'm taking a look at like strange names, more familiar versions, reorganize his crayons. Uh, this per parenthetical, the ones that can fit into his box, that is. These all seem like very strange phrases, and they're just things to keep in mind. And so the first thing I'm going to do, well, each of the colors, each of the non-purple colors seems to be indicating some you know, particular thing. Like, I think this is pretty much indicating some sort of alien armpit. This is some sort of gargoyle fart. Uh, We've got a pirate's peg leg and what appear to be some troll socks. Okay. Well, I, I've i never heard of any of these. So let's Google them. Let's stick them all into Google. Okay. Um, so I'm going to check this. This seems interesting. List of films with post-credit scenes. I'm going to check this and it turns out that it's just like not really relevant. Um, I have no idea why fart is on that page, but whatever. And like, you know, then I get to, you have found something that, uh, gives you search techniques. I'm like, Ugh. and then I get a word list from the MIT mystery hunt. And like, there are, there are sites on the internet that have word lists. They're really, they're really important for programming. Um, but if you, uh, if you search for a list of words and find a word list, something's wrong. Okay, so let's let's go back. Um, all right, what is the theme of this puzzle? It is Harold and the Purple Crayon. We've got a bunch of colors. So what if they're crayons? I don't know. I'm try this. See what happens. Right? That would make sense. That would you know this this puzzle being like about crayons would make sense. Don't know. Let's Google it. Okay, so that didn't work either. Um, all right. Uh, in fact, I get the same word list again. Woo! We did it. We finally broke Google. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, okay. So, I might have things wrong in here. Right? Like, why does it say 
gargoyle fart? Well, because it there was a gargoyle that looked like it had stuff coming out of it, but it could be that there are other um uh there are other things that um uh that could be. So I'm gonna pick one of the ones that like I'm more confident about. Like like that was clearly an armpit. All right, so I'm just gonna search armpit crayon and see what happens. Wait, what? I got a hit? You've got to be kidding me. Wait, there's a list on Wikipedia that turns up when I say crayon and armpit? Hold on, I got to check this out. All right, Wikipedia lists are like heavenly in the in the mystery hunt. If you can find a good Wikipedia list, it's great. So, uh, I, so I, I did this and I control left armpit and there is a crayon called alien armpit. And I'm like, score. That's what I'm looking for. Um, and so I start looking at this and then I start looking at the other colors and I'm like, a bunch of these seem to match. All right. It was gargoyle gas, not gargoyle fart. Um, you know, uh, it, you know, it was um, Sasquatch socks instead of troll socks, right? These were all things that would have made my made my search not work. Um, so oftentimes, you know, you you may have wrong information, you may have wrong clues, and you may um, try, you know, have to try different subsets. By the way, when I picked those, that was not because I was looking at the answers. I literally tried to identify and find this page again, and like actually failed at it so you know even when i knew what the puzzle was i still i still failed on my first search okay so uh so i go back and describe these you know take a look at these pictures and it seems like all of these have a pretty legitimate you know picture but like this pirate with a peg leg if i go back there's no pirate here and in fact if you count counting things is very important you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There's 16 crayons in Silly Sense and 20 in this picture. So four of these clearly aren't it. And so the question is, what are those four doing? But we could put X's on them for now. We put X's on them. And then we identify what's going on in here. And in that case, we do the sort, right? Uh, I can use my scroll wheel for this. So so some enterprising person goes on the spreadsheet and puts the name of every, uh, pers every one of them in the order that they're on there. And we go, OK, why is it in this order? And hopefully this was uh, fairly straightforward. It's, it's once again in alphabetical order. Excuse me. Alphabetical order shows up all the time. So here we go. Alphabetical order. That's a good indication that we need to resort this. So um, so we want to take a look at, all right, is there any inherent ordering involved with this data set? Well, you know, it's always good to check the Wikipedia list, but the, the Wikipedia list is sort of in alphabetical order. Um, we may do something... Um, yeah, we'll get to that. Uh, is there any information we haven't used yet? And can we use any new information? So this is where I tell you, uh, there was a lot of jokes before about the arrow going straight off to the left. And let me tell you what happened the time that I test solved this puzzle. So the time that I test solved this puzzle, we noted that uh, every picture has Harold in it from somewhere. And it, it's not in the same art style. So we doubted that the person actually drew it. What we suspected was that Harold was copied from the uh, the books. And so we're like, okay, we are going to go through Harold and the Purple Crayon. We're going to go through this book and find every single instance of Harold and compare it to these pictures and try to figure out, because then we can put it in order of the book. And I, I could say that like, a third to a half the time of this play test, probably actually a half, if I'm being honest, was searching through Harold and the Purple Crayon. Um, and uh, fortunately, someone figured out the real thing to do uh, and saved us all from that. But it was very bad. Um, and it's a good thing to indicate that, like, 
a puzzle like this, you know, that that it could take you a while to solve, right? These puzzles are not meant to be solved in 20 minutes um, by one person. They're meant to be solved by multiple people over the course of an hour, two hours, three hours, right? It's supposed to, they're supposed to be meaty and take time. Um, so w while I'm talking about um, uh, thought processes, there's plenty of wrong paths to go down. There's plenty of things to try that just won't work. Um, so, uh, so we start taking a look at other things, and I like some of these suggestions. Use the alphabetical ordering that backs all the X's is a, a, not a bad idea. Uh, graphics elements that bleed from one panel to the next um, is is not a bad idea, right? It uses the art, get stuff from the art. So, I'm gonna take a look at the sort, and like here's the table again. So every silly scent is related to another color, right? These, so these scented crayons, when they were created, they weren't new colors. They were just the same colors that Crayola had, but with scents added into them. So in reality, Alien Armpit is the same thing as yellow green. It's the same color. Bigfoot Feet is the same as tan. Boogie Buster is the same as spring green, and so on and so forth. And uh, so we we have that these are all actually these actual colors. And so at some point, someone thinks, all right, let's copy those over. Right, let's let's copy those over and 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 see what we can do. And like, these are enough that you can reorder them. Now, the question is, what do you do about the four the four that didn't work? And so this is a uh, this was a rare case of there is actually too much information in the puzzle. Uh, but it is clued. It says the ones he can fit into his box, that is. Reorganize his crayons, the ones he can fit into his box. Presumably, this is telling us to ignore the ones with the X's, right? Ignore these ones that aren't actually real ones. Um, there is. It is rare in the mystery hunt where there will be straight up things that don't do anything. There may be things that do less in the puzzle than others. Um, but if there is going to be things that don't do anything, there should be clues somewhere that there is extra information that you need to not use. Um, so we put this in order. And in fact, we then put the pictures in that order. Oh, sorry. We need to come up with a way to turn this into an answer. We seem to have used the color information, but why were these presented as pictures? Um, and so, uh, you know, what information haven't we used? We've used all about the color. We haven't used anything about the actual drawings themselves besides identifying them to a crayon. But like, why is this presented as a picture? Well, let's reorder it. So you put the picture into uh, Google Drawing, you cut it up, you move the pieces around until it's in the four by four box. Um, uh, and uh, you get this. And so you take a look at this picture and you're like, and then somebody, squints and sees it. And so it, I'm just going to give you a moment before I hit the reveal, because this is a very fun reveal. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to give like 20 seconds if you can see what's happening. While I take a nice drink of water. Okay, so I see someone said wow, so I'm sure some people are now seeing it. But if you haven't seen it, the pictures come together to spell the B in BLT. <laughs> um, uh, this is pretty awesome. Um, uh, this was done by uh, Joe Cabrera, if I remember correctly, who's an amazing artist. He does the palindrome name tags every year. Um, so this is the, the B and BLT. And then that is another clue phrase. And I see Lee has posted, in fact, the bacon emoji. The B and BLT stands for bacon. The answer to this puzzle is bacon. Whew. All right. Um, so we'll give people another second for any questions. Uh, I'm just looking through. 
Yeah. And then I did want to call it. So like right at the end of our last question period, somebody had asked if there were any words of advice, if we've only done remote hunts before, we will definitely be covering that as sort of like the later part of the presentation about just sort of how to have a safe and healthy hunt. Uh, yeah. And, and in fact, also, um, I am working on a resource, uh, to go into more detail about that. Um, especially for people who've never been on MIT's campus before and need help navigating it. Um, and so I will, uh, just, you know, wherever you found the link for this, there may be another link coming soon. Um, okay. So, uh, good. We got a couple questions. Was it true the colors used in each picture are the same as the colors each image was cluing? Does the color, the picture of the alien armpit use the color alien armpit? Uh, I believe so. So the problem is uh, Crayola crayons um, do not have, uh, we, we have hex codes that um, get close, but we can't perfectly identify it, especially since people's monitors are different. Um, that being said, uh, I believe the intention was that they are the same color, at least the color that is generally accepted that Crayola crayons are. Um, uh, Yannick was asking the four extra pictures in the puzzle. Uh, yeah, so we asked, so I am, I am not the author, but I'm trying to relay what the author had said before, which was, um, that, uh, some early play testing meant that people started, uh, piecing it together like a jigsaw without recognizing any of the color issues. And so by making it seem like it was too many, it reduced the jigsawing, um, and just brute forcing through the entire puzzle. Um, and how did I decide the picture should be four by four? Well, so uh, two two notes. First of all, the original puzzle had four columns. Uh, so I'm going to try putting it the same way that, that the original puzzle did, uh, at least as close to that as I can get. And secondly, if I, you know, if I have to, uh, you know, order things in a in some sort of grid, I'm going to try to get it as square as possible. If this didn't note that actually. Oh, no, it does. It doesn't work if you do it as a eight by two. Yeah, because then those would be on top. Anyway, um, so uh, yeah, I mean, it's also worth trying the eight by two um, if that didn't work, right? Like trying something, and, and here's the thing: trying something is does not cost much. So try lots of things. All right. Uh, yes. All right. So, uh, common puzzle types that you're going to see: uh, you saw the crossword clues in Amelia Bedelia. Um, those come up a lot. It is worth, if you've never interacted with crosswords before, it is worth solving uh, like one or two easy ones just to get familiar with the conventions of crosswords. Like clues must always be the same part of speech as the um, as what it's cluing. There are also cryptic clues. Cryptic clues are a lot. If you see a crossword and all the clues look like complete garbage, uh, it's probably cryptic. Um, they're not garbage, but you just have to be right a very specific way. Um, you'll also see various variety grid puzzles. Basically, you know, there's the traditional crosswords that stick things in a in a in a square bunch of squares, and then there's rose gardens which stick things in hexagons, well triangles and hexagons. There's uh, spiral puzzles which a uh, spiral inward. Um, there's all sorts of of shenanigans people can do. Uh, logic puzzles. Uh, this includes both the ones like. There are five people conveniently named with first names A through E and last names of F through J and blah, 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 you know, all these different things where you're, you know, crossing stuff. But then also there's uh, often the uh, Nikolai style. Um, uh, yeah, just like Japanese logic grids. Yes, thank you. Japanese logic grids. But there yeah, are often like... times where you're just given a giant pile of clues and say, have fun. In addition to a giant pile of images, videos, audio, whatever. You know, I had a puzzle last year that required teams to identify uh, about 110 um, songs. Just go. Uh, oftentimes, you will be asked to do a thing for the team running the hunt. I'm guessing that teammate will not have a round that is entirely do things for the team running the hunt. Um, but they are common, uh, common things at the mystery hunt. Um, that being said, because it's back on campus... If I had to make a prediction, if I was a betting person and had to make a bet, my bet is that teammate is going to try to do as many physical on-site puzzles as they can to take benefit of the fact that they're the first hunt to be on-site in three years. And there is 
hopefully someone on teammate either laughing at me right now or I don't know, whatever. And of course, there's all sorts of other things. And in fact, puzzles can get really weird. So yeah. Well, and then just to call out like another thing that will be different this year is that so the last couple of years when there have been physical puzzles, they had to be mailed out <laughs> in the case of 200 little beautiful boxes of shredded paper. Uh, so now you'll just need to pick those up locally on campus instead. So some unusual puzzles. Uh, 2012 had a puzzle called Carb Pool, where you went to go pick up the puzzle. They gave you a bag of reference pasta. And then they said, here's your puzzle pasta. And said, wait, they took it back from you, put it on the table, and smashed it with a dictionary. Um, and then handed you the bag of smashed pasta. Um, it was uh, not what I was expecting to happen. 2019 and the realm of food had a... Uh, uh, 2019 had a, uh, a puzzle called Funkin', which they presented to you a box of Dunkin' Donuts donuts, and every single donut had a flash drive in it. Um, and then the flash drive had a bunch of music and it related to the, uh, tour music tour. It was fascinating. Uh, the Marty Bishop meta literally says, here's a paper enigma sheet machine. Um, uh, and like, have fun. Uh, there was a puzzle started in 2001 and has had multiple followers ever since called the realm of unspeakable chaos. Uh, where uh, Kevin Wald created a conlang specifically for the mystery hunt. And then, uh, so you've this language that has literally never existed before this, and you're expected to crack it, basically, to to translate something that was in that language. Um, and then a, 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 there was a great puzzle, um, best song ever, uh, which is from 2020. I absolutely love this puzzle. Uh, it it just plays It's a Small World After All, the chorus of it, I think 14 times. Um, it was wonderful. Uh, I, I, sub, I, I just like that that is a concept. Um, there's also lots of puzzles where it's just like, here's something very obscure. Have fun. Go. Um, and you have to become an expert at it for, the, for a couple hours. Look, there could be lots of different stuff for puzzles, and I could stand here all day describing some of my favorite puzzles from the hunt. I love talking about hunt. Um, but one thing to talk about is things that are not a puzzle. So uh, the mystery hunt has kind of adopted this is not a puzzle as a safety tool um, because there are times in which there are things that sh that are not puzzles, and we don't want puzzlers in the puzzle hunt mindset. We want them in the mindset of being safe, being healthy and being respectful of everyone around them. And quite frankly, anything can be a puzzle. So it's important to say this. Safety First um, was a puzzle that was hidden in the first aid kit in 2014. Um, the fear meta used the health and safety rules. Over 9,000, one of the steps involved indexing into uh, something in, this, in the site's FAQ. Uh, and this is now a puzzle was uh, our frustrations when people took our this is not a puzzle and said that they wanted to solve it. So we made the poster a puzzle and then added stuff on the registration site. Um, all right. So now talking about meta puzzles. A meta puzzle is a puzzle that uses the answers to previous puzzles. It may or may not use other things, but it definitely has the answers. So an important thing about meta puzzles is that they are kind of the lifeblood of what is going on, right? Oftentimes, it doesn't matter how many individual puzzles you solve. The winner is the puzzle. Um, uh, the winner is the solver who solves all of the meta puzzles. Uh, that was certainly the case for us last year. You didn't have to solve all of our puzzles, but you needed to solve all of our metas. I believe the same was true in 20, uh, 21 and 2020, and then I'm not going to try to remember anymore right now. So uh, this often means that you are trying to, in some cases, shortcut your work because, uh, because you don't have to solve all of them. In fact, some puzzles your team just may not solve, um, right? It may be the case of like, we opened up a puzzle and it is like, you know, it is a horrifying um, uh, bridge uh, puzzle hybrided with a, a cryptic crossword. 
I say that, of course, Palindrome would solve that because June would just go on it. But anyway, um, some horrifying puzzle. You're like, I can't solve this. The meta puzzle should still be solvable without you solving that puzzle. Um, so in fact, you're often starting to work on meta puzzles before you have all the answers. Um, so, uh, so solving meta puzzles will work similar, but there's a couple things to consider. Um, the, and one of them, which I didn't put on the slide, but I realize it's how to, uh, important to mention is when do you start solving meta puzzles? Um, so, uh, I start solving meta puzzles as soon as it opens, whether or not we have any answers, but that's because I'm weird. Most of the time you want to start solving a meta puzzle. You want to start looking to see if you can see what's going on when you have half the answers and start actively trying to solve it when you've got about two thirds to three quarters of the answers. But some, in, uh, while solving meta puzzles works a lot like solving other puzzles, um, there are two important questions to ask. Is it a pure meta or shell meta? And is it an orthographic meta or semantic meta? So the idea here is um, a pure meta is something that uses just the answers, nothing else, no other pieces of information, no shell, nothing with the titles, nothing with whatever, right? It just uses the however many answer words you've got. Whereas the shell meta, shell puzzle, uh, shell metas always uh, have some additional piece of information. So for instance, one of our, our metas last year uh, gave you glyphs. Every time you solved a puzzle in it, it, it gave you this, this glyph. And what you had to realize was that those glyphs were, you had to go resolve some of the previous puzzles using the information in those glyphs. And only when you had that piece of information could you solve that part of the meta puzzle. Um, so, uh, so that's the, the pure versus shell distinction. Orthographic versus semantic is asking, is the word chosen for its letters? Or is it chosen for its meaning? Um, so uh, oftentimes, uh, sometimes the answers have no relationship to each other whatsoever. Um, and you're like, OK, this was clearly chosen for its letters. Last year, we had a meta that had all of the all of the puzzles had um, two sets of double letters in them. And it's like, clearly, these were chosen for the letters. Um, whereas semantic was like, we had one where all of the answers were um, actually names of albums. Uh, and so they were chosen for the meaning and nothing about the letter. Um, OK, so uh, but the important thing is, um, like gender, these are uh, on a spectrum. Uh, they are not either or. They can be somewhere in the middle. Um, so for the record, uh, people talking about TMNT, we had a uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles puzzle. Um, well, related to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles puzzle. I'm I'm vaguely familiar with it. Yeah. Didn't you write it? I said I was vaguely familiar. Yeah, I wrote it. Okay. All right. So uh, another important thing to keep in mind for a meta puzzle is asking, what question is this answering? So um, meta puzzles are often how the story is conveyed to the hunters. Um, the individual puzzles sometimes don't have a great, uh, uh, they have, may have a great connection or they may have a tenuous connection to the puzzle, but the story is often told through the metas. Um, and so the, they have a specific narrative purpose. So um, last year, for instance, one of our one of our sections of the hunt, you were running around completing pieces of a plot device. It, it was a book themed hunt. Plot device is fine. Um, so the question was in this area, what what is the piece of the plot device that they have that we need? In 2021, we went to visit a alternate universe MIT called Perp IW, and there were problems that needed to get fixed at Perp IW. And so, what were this? How do we fix those problems? 2020, we were visiting an amusement park, and we had to figure out how to fix those areas um, to bring the park back to life. 2019 was a puzzle. Uh, was a hunt based around the um, uh, Nightmare, Be Nightmare Before Christmas, where all these holidays were colliding, and so. There was a problem caused by two holidays colliding. What do you need to fix it? Um, and 2018 was all themed around uh, Inside Out. Is that what that's called? Yeah, Inside Out. And uh, every memory was a core, uh, every meta puzzle was a core memory uh, that, the, uh, that we needed to find. All right.
So enough talking about meta puzzles. Let's get into one. Let's talk about a circus line. This is one of my favorite meta puzzles for showing people what a meta puzzle is. Literally, when I talk about this with my students, this is the one I talk about. It is great. So uh, let's bring up that. So here's what it looks like. Sometimes the meta puzzle will be on a different page, and sometimes you just get the round page, and that's it, and you have to click on the link. So uh, here it is. Here's the uh, 10 puzzles. And, uh, you know, I, I'm going to look to see if these are in any order, and they're not, right? This is just alphabetical order. So, again, this order is irrelevant. So uh, we go back to this, and I'm like, all right, so here are all the uh, answers. We got Bookworm, Cocoon, Co-Sponsors, Enticing, Enumerate, Medley, Octopod, Pinhead, Substitute, and Torchwood. Okay, so now I'm going to look at this, and again, I'm trying to ask myself, is it orthographic or semantic? Is there anything weird about these uh, answers? Is there something weird about some of these answers? Um, and, you know, I take a look, especially at those top three, and I'm like, yeah, Bookworm, Cocoon, Co-Sponsors, that's a lot of O's. That is a ridiculous amount of O's. Okay, but they're not in all of them, right? So enticing enumerate medley, we don't they're not in all of them. So let's let's sort them. Let's see what happens. All right, so this splits the set of words exactly in half. Great. I like splitting things exactly in half. Uh, it often means we can pair things up. So and now I'm I'm looking at my two sets and I'm trying to say, okay, what's next in these sets? Like, what am I looking for? It, you know, it, especially if I'm trying to pair them up, I want some other property other than O's and not O's. And so you may have noticed that this, uh, these answers are in a font that is a different font from the rest of the uh, uh, presentation. And that's because these, uh, these are in a monospaced font. Uh, monospaced fonts, do very nice things for showing patterns uh, because oftentimes like letters like I will hide, uh, you know, how long words are compared to each other. So puzzle answers are often written in monospaced. And so we take a look and go, okay, cool. Um, so uh, in monospaced, like I noticed that all of these are different lengths. Right, we have one that ends here, one that ends here, 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 here. And in fact, the same thing over here, over here, over here, over here, over here. And once again, there's no duplicates in each group. And because there's no duplicates, duplicates, not duplicants. Anyway, um, we're going to try to order them by length. Uh, and in fact, not only is there unique in each group, but they line up and suddenly I have my connection between the two. Okay, so we could do that. We can connect the two. So we now have these two uh, two words that connect. And uh, uh, oftentimes when you have two things that are the same length, a, a common tactic to think about, and this is something you get off of um, uh, from experience, this kind of thing. It's like if you have two things the same length, you're going to put one under the other, and you're going to see where they how they line up. And in particular, since the O's are important, I'm going to line them up and see what's under the O's. So I get cocoon and I put it over medley and get E L E, octopod over pinhead get P H A, bookworm and so on and so forth until I spell elephant in a tutu. Which again, the question is. If we have the, the the musical a circus line, which is a chorus line that has had a circus added to it, how would you ruin it? An elephant in a tutu. Okay. But once again, this wasn't the most realistic meta-solving experience. It is rare that you have... I was waiting... So Matt Clebson just posted three ring circus and has just figured it out. And I was not going to say it and wait till somebody said it in chat. So nice job, Matt. Um, so uh, but a more realistic example uh, would look something more like this. Um, we're missing two of the answers. 
right? These two answers are super hard. Team's not going to solve them, or we just haven't finished solving them yet. But it might be nice to to uh, not have to solve them. And so you can take a look, and you can still get the mechanic with just eight of the answers. And in fact, you can get nine of the letters of our 15-letter answer. And so we get this. We get ELE, blank, 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 NTI, blank, 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 UTU. We don't know anything about these three letters because we don't have the right word for that. But we know this one has to be the, from the letters in pinhead in some order. And so from there, I, you know, I'm looking like, OK, well, this looks like elephant and confirm that we can get PHA. And then like not a lot of things end in UTU. So from there, you can probably start to piece together what this is and solve it without all of the answers. Uh, a good rule of thumb is to try to solve when you have 75% in a round. As I mentioned earlier, um, you may have to do some, some guessing, um, but it will work. But the advantage of this also is that you can start back solving. So at this point, if we get elephant in its tutu, one of the things we know is that because of where the uh, P, H, and A are in pinhead, we know that all three of these have to be O's. And so now I can pull up a word finder, uh, which we'll talk about later, and go, oh, you know, oh, blank, blank, oh, blank, oh, blank. And there's not going to be a ton of things. And you can try it, right? You could try those as answers. Um, and you can solve those puzzles without actually knowing what the puzzles are about at all. You back solve them. Uh, same thing over here. We know that there's got to be an NAT in certain spots, and we can back solve it as well. Um, so back solving is completely legal. It's completely an okay thing to do from a rules perspective. Some teams may have more opinions about it than others. Um, it does feel a little bit frustrating when you're solving a puzzle, having fun, and then someone back solves it from underneath you. Um, so it can be it can be really fun, but also, you should check with your team before back solving to make sure that it is going to be an enjoyable process for everybody involved. Exactly. Like palindrome, much like our, our moniker suggests, enjoy solving both ways. But some teams are different. Also note that some uh, metas will be way more back solvable than others. This is pretty back solvable um, once you have enough. Uh, but for instance, last year, the task uh, meta there was almost no back solving in that round. Like it was, the answers were stuff like make a Star Trek video about Hunt or um, uh, send us a telegram or write Nancy Drew solves a puzzle, right? These, you just, there was no back solving them and the meta didn't require the letters. So, all right. Uh, uh, we'll give people a little bit uh, longer for questions. Somebody asked a question earlier. Oh, there was the, you talk about puzzle your students. Yeah, I hide puzzles in my classwork all the time and wait to see if uh, students figure it out. It's great. Um, all right. Well, again, if you have questions, put them in chat and, uh, and we will hit them up uh, on our next, after this one last meta, the last puzzle that we're going to go over today, tonight. Spaceopolis. All right. So uh, Spaceopolis looks like this. It's from the 2020. This is the round page. Uh, this is a little bit different because it has um, its own page for it. So uh, this is where you put the answer in. You put it up here. Um, and so we see, OK, here's our flavor text, but nothing else. So this is a pure meta, right? Well, except that each of the puzzles had a header. So this is the orbital simulator, orbital simulator uh, meta, or sorry, header. And this is the whack-a-mole header. And each one of them has some number of stars and comets. And it's not unusual for each round to have its own art. It is unusual for each round, the art in each round to, uh, in each puzzle in a round to vary. So this is this is suspicious to us. So I look to see how I can use this, and I'm like, okay, cool, we got this. So the comets are going from left to right. That's a great ordering, left to right. Let's do it. 
And then we can use the stars as an index for uh, an index in and get hey goo crater. Excellent. We've got an answer. Let's put it in. Oh. All right. Um, so that didn't work. Okay. Well, all right. So, so, but hey goo crater is clearly something. We don't get random craters named in puzzles that often. Um, so uh, so let's let's Google what it is. And it's a it's a lunar impact crater. Um, and so I mean, I would be a little suspicious if some random lunar impact crater showed up, but like this is this space opolis meta, so like maybe it's something. And so you start reading it, start looking over. There's not like a lot of things about this crater. It's not a long Wikipedia page. Um, but one thing that's interesting that you think about is like, oh, it's just, you know, it's a random crater on the far side of the moon. Wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. The far side of the moon, like the the dark side of the moon? Huh. Okay, hold on. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, let's think about it. All right. Well, so somebody looks up the Dark Side of the Moon album and goes, you know, probably as a joke. Honestly, probably is someone suggesting this as a joke. Um, but does it and realizes that there's 10 tracks and we got 10 answers in this puzzle and are like, oh. And in fact, then when you start listening, you realize, oh, well, like, tracheostomy could be a synonym for breathe. Or partners in crime for us and them, greenbacks for money, and then people start realizing, oh, we can, we can start uh, lining up an answer with the dark side of the moon track, and so you can put these in order, and then you can do something called reading down the diagonal. This was uh, reading down the diagonal was a little bit more uh, common in old uh, older puzzle hunts. Uh, it is not as common now, but it is still something worth knowing um, that. Uh, Basically, you take the first letter of the first word, the second letter of the second word, third letter of the third word, so on and so forth to spell prison break. Um, in this case, it is also take the answer and index it by the track number, which turns out to be diagonalization. And this is where we say a little something about uh, red herrings. So we go back to this. So if you saw, if you get this, you have a goo crater. And one of the things you'll know is that the, the puzzle that solves the tracheostomy called operation is first. You know that. So if you don't have tracheostomy, you know that there's a blank right here. And so it's possible that you go into your handy word finder, search along line, and try to figure out, okay, something agu crater. It can't be that many things, right? And some, the number one thing that comes up is degu crater on Venus. And so just like we think that hegu crater is correct because it's in space, you think degu crater is correct as well. And then you spend a lot of time um, uh, looking over the surface of Venus until somebody finally solves this puzzle. Um, and this puzzle was really hard to solve because, uh, well, it, sorry, it was not hard to solve. Nobody wanted to solve it because it was videos of surgical operations. It and wasn't like, difficult to solve. Yeah, it I, was unpleasant I, to solve. Yes, exactly. I, I, I certainly could not solve that. I, I could not watch those videos. Um, so we had, so, so we fell into the Hegu. Someone on our team finally solved it. We got Hegu, uh, uh, crater, and then we solved the meta. Um, afterwards, I was talking with some other hunters, and uh, there were a lot of hunters who had the same issue. Uh, there were a lot of people complaining about Degu crater. Um. It was, it was, uh, you know, and that, and that's part of the beautiful thing about the hunt as a, as a organization, as a community, because in the end, we all solved the same puzzles, or at least tried to solve the same puzzles. And our experiences aren't going to be exactly the same, but they're going to be uh, similar. And so it's great talking with people about how you solve puzzles versus how other people solve puzzles or commiserating over, you know, really hard puzzles. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry. I just saw, I didn't know about the Bermuda triangle thing. That sounds amazing. Um, yeah. Anyway. All right. Uh, so we're on this. Uh, okay. So some notes about sorting out meta puzzles, uh, and we're going to 
pause for questions at the end of this. So, uh, you know, if you want to ask questions about metas, um, you can certainly ask them. But uh, since we said that these are spectra, let's put them on the spectra. A circus line is clearly pure. It only used the answers, nothing else. Spaceopolis, I don't have it all the way in shell because technically the answer was gained by the dark side of the moon uh, and um, aha, and you didn't actually need Hegu Crater to make that. You could have noticed it without that. So it's not purely a shell, but it does often use a shell. And then orthographic, a circus line, just use it for letters. It didn't matter what bookworm was. It was just an answer that had three O's in it. Like the Torchwood was absolutely a Doctor Who puzzle, right? It was a, it was, it was a wonderful Doctor Who puzzle. I love solving it. But in the end, the fact that it was a Doctor Who uh, term didn't mean anything. Uh, Spaceopolis, on the other hand, like you needed to index two letters out of every word, one for the Hegu Crater message and one for the, the prison break message. But other than that, what was really more important was how they related to Dark Side of the Moon. Um, so again, it's, it's, you know, it's not worth sorting out whether every meta is a pure or shell meta or whether every meta is an orthographic or semantic. But oftentimes, um, uh, but oftentimes it's worth thinking about this because it can help you focus on the on the meta on the, on solving the puzzle. So we're going to give a moment for questions while I once again consume more water. I see there's people also commiserating about the blank Egu creator. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It was absolutely brutal. Okay. Um, so we've talked a lot about the process of solving and how you might think about some of this. Um, and so um so uh but let's be clear, a lot of this stuff is uh helpful. Um, because you have tools, right? There are some absolutely brilliant people out there who can do all sorts of word uh, finding in their in their head. I can't. That's why I use tools. Um, so uh, basically, we could cr create a list of tools, but um, the MIT Mystery Hunt has already done it. Um, and so it's you're better off just checking out that page. Uh, yeah, just check out that page. Um, so the number one tool that we use during the hunt all the time is uh, word finders. Um, if you're not familiar with this list, these three are the three to, to take a look at. One look, neutromatic, and cat. Um, one look is great if you know the definition of a word. Neutromatic is great if you suspect it's a name. And cat is incredibly powerful, but it has a, some weird syntax stuff that you have to pay attention to. Um, if you are already familiar with regular expressions, you may want to use some of the ones further down because uh, they like neutromatic implements some of regular expressions, but not all of it. Whereas these like will implement regular expressions. Uh, neutromatic is probably the number one site I go to during the hunt, other than the Mystery Hunt site and Google Drives. Um, again, I'm not gonna like you. I could explain a bunch of this stuff, but you're better off just clicking it and playing around with it. Um, so this section is all about, um, so there's crosswords and cryptics. Uh, basically, you can get very far by Googling crossword clues and putting crossword clue after it. Um, but these will also help you get farther. Um, this crossword parser takes an image of a crossword and turns it into a grid. It is magic. It is absolutely magic. Just straight up wizardry. Um, there are all sorts of ciphers. We didn't actually pick any puzzles with ciphers in them uh, because I forgot to do that when I was picking puzzles. But um, all, a lot of uh, ciphers get used. Uh, these are some common ones down here. Uh, Braille, Morse, binary, semaphore, pig pen, uh, and ASCII should actually be on there as well. Um, these are things that will decode those for you automatically. I need to spend more time with Monkey, actually, because that looks so useful, honestly. Uh, you can, like, actually put in the semaphore as opposed to, like, having to do, um, uh, having to, like, 
yeah well yeah and like i like uh puzzle there's usually like puzzle sidekick or various other things for mobile phones that have alternate charts that are often very helpful for the various ciphers that i just like having on my phone because what if i encounter moon cipher in the wild sometime um or you could be like me and create an artisanal code book um with like hand of course i'm using backgrounds but you know, like hand-drawn nautical flags because I got bored during the pandemic. Um, anyway. Uh, image search tools. Reverse image search is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, you should absolutely use as much of it as you can. It's just, it's just great. Um, there's so many images you need to identify. Uh, audio search. So uh, it used to be that previous hunts, uh, you could have a puzzle that was, here's 50 audio clues, and uh, you need to identify them. And, uh, you know, that that is the puzzle, right? Identify these 50, and then, like, you have a little bit more on top of that that you have to do. Uh, nowadays, that's not the case, because Shazam exists, and will just identify the music for you. So oftentimes the music puzzle is that and something else. So like last year, two of our music puzzles, one of them, we overlaid screams on top of the music. And uh, another one was not uh, individual pieces of music, but mashups. And so you, there were two or more songs playing at the same time. Um, so uh, so hunters, uh, so puzzle writers have accounted for Shazam. And in fact, it is the assumption that either you are using it or you're or you can't use it because we've done some shenanigans, some shazamigans. Um, uh, libraries. Uh, most programmers will have their own libraries who've been doing this for a while. If you don't have your own libraries of things just to play around with, these are great places to, to look. If you if you like programming, I hear there's a couple programmers who like to hunt. Um, uh, if, if you are that person, uh, this is for you. Uh, lastly, there's this other tool section. Uh, Dev Joe's MIT Mystery Hunt Puzzle Index is uh, just a great way of finding, like, what are other puzzles about this topic? It won't necessarily help you solving the, the puzzle itself, but, like, knowing the different topics uh, that a lot of puzzles are about can be very helpful. I solved a puzzle in 20... Well, I identified the aha to how to solve a puzzle in 2016. Uh, the the um, the meta with the, the paintings... Um, by recognizing it from a puzzle from like 2004. Um, and then there's some other things. The other really important thing to note here is the sets of things. This is a resource that I have not been able to find anywhere else. Like literally the only other time I've seen this is when I started one on Palindrome uh, to like crowdsource. Like this is just like, here's a list of every like uh, group of seven things, like the seven dwarves and the seven deadly sins and the uh, seven layers in a dip. Um, uh, so yeah, it was um, yeah. This is this is so helpful for brainstorming on some puzzles. All right, uh, and then yeah, yeah, and then one other tool that I think is equally important during the hunt is just sort of keeping track of what's going on in a spreadsheet. So teams organize themselves in many different ways. Sometimes you'll you just have you you just have a discord and a prayer. Sometimes you have like a full big board system for tracking what's in progress and what answers there are. But uh, but like at the heart of it, and like as you've seen tonight, as we've been working on puzzles, you're going to have a spreadsheet uh, and that there, that spreadsheet is going to get a lot of data. And one of the questions you're often asking is, how do I get an answer out of all of this data? And a big part of that in sort of helping your team and more and like I often think of it as helping your future self because you're about to go into like a 36 to 48 hour period of not sleeping a ton and not having your brain as full mental capacity is remembering what have you already done? What has been done here? Just sort of what kind of gift can I give to the rest of my team and to the future version of me who's coming back to this puzzle after three hours of assembling jigsaw pieces? So just again, we've said it already, but I'll say it again is that there are rare occasions where you are working on a mystery hunt puzzle alone for 20 minutes and you get an answer, but most of the time these are written for a team. Uh, uh, 
sorry, I just saw the comments and got distracted, but uh, you are working on a team. You're you're sort of working together on one of these puzzles for a couple of hours. And it's helpful to know what you are doing and to label your columns clearly as a result. Track somewhere in like a separate tab what's already been done. What have we tried? What have we looked at? So that's easy to get back to the original state of a puzzle to sort of knock out so to make sure that you're not going back to some of these same areas that another person on your team may have already hit before. So again, clearly labeling spreadsheet columns, maintaining the original order that clues came in in case that it wasn't just alphabetical. And that was, in fact, crucial information. So let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and hang out for a little bit and see if there are any other questions before we dive into sort of getting back on campus and being healthful and good to the puzzle community at hunt oh yeah the, there's some questions about like what puzzle this is this is a puzzle from i want to say 2020 and it yeah, has 2021 yeah 2021 it was like yeah. square dancing that's why we were trying to keep track of all of that data i believe it was like hex squares too in the end oh yeah that was like everybody dance now i think yes everybody dance now Oh yes, and as you've already noted in the comments, we had this. We tried to find like the the nastiest spreadsheet from our team drive. All right, I am not seeing. Oh, let's see. Is there a suggested tool for communal image manipulation? Generally using Jamboard these days, but it's not quite ideal. I feel like we generally have used Jamboard a lot as well, and it's in ideal, but we've made it work. So um, I know from test solving, we've mixed between Jamboard and um, Google Drawings. Um, so the two advantages of Google Drawings is um, that you uh, you can, um, first of all, just op open a drawing in the middle of a spreadsheet, uh, which can be helpful if it's not just like one picture, if you're doing like some, some shenanigans. Uh, the second is that it, it seemed to deal with individual images, like like editing an image easier. Um, I remember uh, we were, well, okay, we, a bunch of people were test solving the puzzle and I was watching because I was one of the authors, but there was um, the, the puzzle, this is now a puzzle, involves a uh, jigsaw with oddly shaped pieces and uh, people learned how to do unusual crops in Google, uh, uh, Google drawings uh, that way. And it was um, a site watching them painstakingly crop every single uh, one of them. Uh, there's people putting good suggestions in here. Miro, I don't, I mean, like I'm finding out more and more about Miro every, uh, every day. I wrote a puzzle um, like a week ago and I made the grid in Miro and I was shocked that that worked. Yeah. And then I'm also seeing a suggestion for, uh, for they've, that backseating paint net. So yeah, like there are there are other solutions available, but I'm not seeing any other questions. So let's go ahead and move on to the next section, uh, health and community. So this is the first year we're going to be back on campus. That's very exciting. Uh, but like it also felt really important since we were going to be back on campus, we are back together in some sense to talk about how to solve in a in, in a more in making sure that you're solving in a healthy way. And what that could potentially mean, and I just sort of thought about it in a in in the sense of a few different groups. So taking care of yourself, taking care of your team, taking care of MIT's campus, and taking care of the larger puzzling community. So let's let's start out with just sort of taking care of yourself. And please look at this beautiful picture of your hosts in 2013, uh, asleep at the wheel. Oh man, those were the days. Uh, anyways, uh, it, it was, that was just like a whole time. And I'm pretty sure that I literally like went home and slept on Friday and then came back on Saturday and did not leave campus until the end of hunt. And that's not super healthy. I was not following four, three, two, one. And that's probably why I had a bad time with that hunt amongst many reasons. Uh, but so talking about four, three, two, one, uh, this is something Jen came up with. And I immediately co-opted for this because I think it's it's beautiful. Uh, 
but you should be attempting to get four hours of sleep every day because your body will still be mad at you because you're not sleeping, but it will be less mad. And less mad is a great base base state to start from. Uh, you want to try and get three meals because real food will, again, make your brain happier. And again, we appease the brain. If the brain's fine, we're good to go. We can solve puzzles. Uh, and then uh, two sets of clothes. We've we've sort of jokingly uh, talked about uh, things being timey wimey, and like it is amazing how much just like putting on a different t shirt for the day just like helps your helps your brain switch over into it's Saturday now. I am awake on Saturday, and I'm cool. I'm cool with that. Uh, and then one shower, please shower. Like just a. Hygiene is huge. Like we are still in a winter of COVID and RSV and the flu and all of the other fun respiratory things. And like regularly showering will just help with that. But also like I find that it helps with the going to sleep portion of things. Uh, and again, like we want zero COVID. We want zero COVID uh, because we are back on campus and COVID is still a thing. So four, three, two, one, zero. Let's count down to a great hunt. Next slide. Let's talk about taking care of your teammates. I'm going to sound like a broken record during this part of the presentation because I do not want there to be a COVID outbreak as a result of Hunt. Uh, I know that, like, in particular, classrooms tend to be fairly close quarters, and just MIT's classrooms in particular do not have ventilation like windows that can be easily opened and closed to help with airflow. I assume that there have been campus improvements to to help with that, just in the way that we have all done various things to help with ventilation in the time of COVID. But uh, I highly, like, I know that it has been recommended that we mask while on campus. I am certainly advising my team that for anybody on campus, we will be masking. I had encourage you to do the same. I encourage you to potentially get a, like a set of those little nas nasal swab tests and tests before you come onto campus, just to make sure that you, you are keeping your teammates healthy and clean from COVID as well. And uh, yeah, and then just sort of talking about like, again, we're going to be back on campus. We're going to be back in the room with everybody. And we are a bunch of puzzle nerds who are in our element this weekend, who are very excited about that element this weekend. And people are going to be super, super excited. And I guess like it's when I think about Hunt, I know that we have like a bunch of people in the room and we are all throwing ideas at one another. and. It can, you know, puzzle hunting is not a contact sport. It should not be a contact sport. Uh, so be nice to your teammates. Uh, people are, everybody in that classroom is sleeping less. And, and as a result, like you are less alert to, to various emotional triggers. So I would lead into being a little bit more direct with people and not getting, and sort of in reflection of that, also, not getting offended if somebody is direct with you, asking you to maybe step back on something, because I I would assume that they are doing it because they care about you and they do not want to be become heated. As, in general, assume tired over malicious if you are in doubt. But also, a big corollary is like that doesn't mean that you get to be an asshole. Uh, anything else that you would like to add on this, Jen? Sorry, I had, I had already moved to the next slide. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. Like, uh, so, I, like I always. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I. So I, I will. Um, I I will be coming out with a lot more uh, details about this. Um, but I will also say that. Um, so issues that happen when groups of people get together still happen with um, still happen during hunt. Um, I will say that as a person who is um, who is a trans woman who uh, goes to a lot of nerdy things, Mystery Hunt has often been better um, in terms of, uh, for instance, trans exception and inclusion um, and, and gender overall. Uh, like Mystery Hunt is very much the hobby that I have that has uh, the most women in it, uh, or at least the highest percentage of women. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there's still there's not still issues when like it's a room full of people with uh you know all genders uh suggesting things 
Um, I have purposely, uh, you know, I had to, I had to train myself to start doing that even before I transitioned to, to like actually stop speaking over people and whatnot. So, um, you know, just because we tend to be generally cool and accepting doesn't mean that those hidden biases don't come up. That is, that is a great point. Thank you for speaking to that. Cool. Let's talk about taking care of the larger MIT community. Uh, one of the reasons Hunt is sort of the wonderful experience that it is, is because of the way that MIT kind of lets it take over campus in a way that I feel most other places would not let an event of this size sprawl. And in particular, that's because the various writing teams and solving teams help maintain that relationship and help us keep that in a way where where MIT makes itself open and available in a way that a lot of places wouldn't. Uh, so again, uh, just right there at the top, we do not want this to be a super spreader event. I've seen a couple comments already that just like COVID is not fun. We have a couple of people in the comments who are recovering from COVID. Uh, and as someone has noted, long the, the effects of long COVID are going to make puzzle solving really not fun and, and less possible. So again, please take the COVID recommendations that are coming from campus and coming from the teams running this seriously. Uh, we want like we, we want to maintain this event for years to come so that many people can continue to enjoy it. And that's a huge part of it. Uh, be respectful to the MIT campus and its inhabitants. There's sort of the the call out at the start of every hunt. If you are doing something that feels like it's immoral elite or illegal, uh, call HQ. So like there are lots of places where where if you feel like you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing, or you don't have access and it's because it's like two in the morning when we're, when we're not actually allowed on campus this year, uh, call, call HQ, check with them. They'll be able to confirm if you need to wait until later. Uh, and then just one other, one other bullet point here is uh, we tend to get really caught up in hunt itself. And it's cool to like walk off of campus and be walking towards your hotel room and still be sort of like doing all the mental processing for a puzzle in the back of your brain. Uh, but Keep your eyes up and alert and be aware of what's happening in the real world as well as you do that. Cool. So let's talk about the the larger puzzle hunting community. Uh, I have not put uh, a COVID thing on this one, but we've already talked about that. We don't want the larger puzzle hunting community to get COVID. So we're not going to do that. Great. Uh, but also, this is a great time to talk about online spoilers. Uh, Jen, I don't know about you, but I am so glad that we decided to write a puzzle that really required Twitter to not be a complete tire fire uh, for this <laughs> year's hunt. Uh, because, oh boy, uh, it's like, you really should not post, like, is it, like, don't post hunt specific details on social media while hunt is running, even if something is super cool. Uh, just like, don't spoil things online for people, especially because like, like we said last year during the intro tour hunt, like don't give away that after round one, everybody gets to hug Zappy. Oh man. And, the, and it appeared in the chat. Love it. Love it. Uh, okay. But yeah, like also uh, don't be a jerk to other solvers in person or online. We're going to be engaging in a lot of online spaces just because hunt is now kind of a hybrid thing. So just again, be respectful to others. Uh, and also, don't break the website. The breaking the website is not the answer to a puzzle, whether in person or online. Uh, and yeah, just again, just like try to be the best version of yourself online, just in general. Ah, uh, let's see anything else uh, on this one, or like like the last couple of slides, Jen. While we wait to see if there are any other comments about things uh, and yeah as foggy has correctly pointed out if you have an epiphany on a puzzle while in the bathroom do take the time to pull up your pants before running back to hq um it's true unless they want you to break the website they they have in uh so um shy can tell you all about uh getting getting uh hunters to hack the website um so uh yeah i mean just it's basically you know the more the better and better you can be as a person during the hunt, the more and more fun that you're going to have. 
uh, because you're going to be a person that people want to hunt with and that people want to be around. And it doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. Uh, certainly, I'm not. And and certainly, oh yeah, like I've I've definitely had bad moments during hunt where yeah. I've tried to to reflect and do better. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's yeah, just be a you know be the best yeah, like version of yourself. Yeah, like we're gonna be we're gonna be back in person. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that feels unique to being in person versus versus remote. I think particularly with with not spoiling things, I, there's gonna be times where you are walking around campus and you're going to see people from other teams. So maybe try to like lower your voice to an inside voice as you're walking past. Cause like, you don't want to give bits and pieces to other people inadvertently. You want to try and be private about that sort of thing. So yeah, if, if people have any other questions, you can feel free to put them in the chat, but um, we're going to end soon. Um, Oh, yeah, and then, yeah, and then uh, just to to call out, uh, so this is the first of two sessions we'll be doing. Uh, this is the online one. Oh, okay. Oh, and we just got a question. So before I dive into that, uh, my team has never done an MIT hunt. Could you talk to the logistics of where the teams work? Are there dedicated workrooms, open areas, something else? Sure. So typically, uh, when a team registers for the hunt on the website, uh, there is a, you can request classroom space on campus. So at some point between now and Mystery Hunt, probably sooner rather than later, although I'm, again, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes with teammate. Uh, teams will receive the, will receive teams that have requested space on campus will receive info on what that space is. Uh, oftentimes teams are, teams could be meeting in their, in their dorm floor. Teams could be meeting in some sort of shared space. Uh, uh, yeah, so, so um, the, the registration site, um, I, it says that you have to register by December 31st, and that is how you also request a space. Yes. Uh, yeah. So like that is that is in terms of that is generally where things are happening. The puzzles themselves are happening online and more details on where online will be happening as part of the the opening of Hunt. Uh, let's see. And then how to get your offline teammates to notice your online things might be useful considering a few time zones time zones over. That will like this will honestly depend on how your team is organizing itself. Uh, for many years, we use Slack to organize things. Now, we, now we've now we swapped over to Discord. Other teams have completely homegrown solutions for that sort of thing. But it's generally like some sort of mix of chat and spreadsheets. And a lot of sort of, I, I think in terms of like when you're actively working on a puzzle, you can generally see one another in a Google spreadsheet uh, or generally note versus ch in, in like a chat situation. But I think that will generally help with things being noticed. Every team is kind of kind of govern itself differently, but that is definitely going to have that's going to be like its own sort of thing. And like really how you organize your team is its own sort of like that's going to depend from team to team of like what works best for them. Yeah. Uh, so it, what what's also interesting is that um we're we're kind of going into a different era of hunt again. So like in in 2021 we all figured out how to uh to hunt completely virtually and then uh 2022 everyone, you know, reused the same setups and now we're going to get to the point where there is going to for many teams there's going to be a contingent on campus, but there are going to be plenty of people who have completely valid reasons to not be on campus. Whether it's not feasible for them in the first place, pandemic or no pandemic or um there could be other things like you are um, have a, a immunodeficient virus and you like you have much more stricter things to make sure you don't get COVID. Right. And that's totally valid and a totally legitimate reason not to show up. Uh, so and to be remote. So the teams are going to have to account be in person, but account for a higher percentage of remote than they normally would. And so uh, that's going to be a, just a different, interesting organizational challenge. Yeah, and, and I'm just going to say, as the captain of Palindrome, we are taking a more remote first approach this year, and we have more people who are going to be off campus, at least per the data I last saw, where that's going to be one of the things that we're figuring out at the same time as everybody else is how do we best balance this for everybody when we're not when we're no longer in the same physical space. I, ironically, actually, last year we were the only team on campus, and we learned a little bit about that. <laughs> Because we had the in-person uh, in-person contingent uh, on MIT, and then everyone else remote. Yeah. 
Um, I so also I, so June mentioned a separate presentation. So people mentioned they'd be very interested in it. Honestly, it 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 is it would be a fascinating presentation. It wouldn't be best done by the two of us, I think, because the two of us until this coming year have only hunted on palindrome. Like I am joining a, a new team for the first time. Um, uh, so we've only really seen how palindromes organize themselves. And like, it would be better done by a forum of people from different teams who've experienced lots of different hunts to, to talk about. I'm not that we haven't experienced lots of different hunts. We've experienced lots of the tons of them, but only, but yeah, it's, it's like, I, yeah. And again, like, I think that there are very different ways you can organize a team and what works best for a palindrome is not necessarily going to be everybody's best approach. And as Junis just noted in the chat, it does very much depend on sort of like, where is your team located? What is your team's size? How is your team distributed? That sort of thing. Uh, I see a question in the chat of, is Palindrome going to win and write Mystery Hunt 2024? We are not going to win. Oh, wait. Oh, 2024. Oh, yeah. No, we're not going to win next year's hunt. Absolutely not. The second I get a call from HQ, I'm plugging. I'm unplugging everybody's internet. Uh, basically, uh, if I stayed on Palindrome, there were threats to tie me to a chair. Uh, which is one of the reasons, among many, which I have decided to to hunt with a different team this year. You are welcome back at any time. We yep. are just going to tie you to the chair. <laughs> yeah, there oh. was no implication, Glenn, uh, that we were imp doing a, a presentation on that. Um, uh, just saying, like, there's a reason why we're not talking about it, the two of us. Um, yeah, so uh, speaking about presentations we are doing, Yes, excellent segue. I love a segue. Uh, let's see. So uh, this is the online version of this presentation. It is, assuming we have set the YouTube up correctly, going to be available for rewatching later. Uh, but we are also going to be doing a an in-person uh, version version of this presentation. It will be a different version of this presentation. Uh, Primarily, like I believe our target audience there is students but i think once we know when and where it will be open to everybody uh that will be january 12th which is the day before hunt uh at some time in the afternoon or evening once we find out from our our overlords at at uh hunt hq where it will be so that a, a further announcement will be made about when and where well, and by when i mean the time but january 12th we will be giving a more interactive version of this presentation uh, I said earlier in the chat as questions were coming in that this specific iteration of the presentation is not a puzzle, uh, but there will be puzzles at that one. Uh, yes, uh, in particular, um, so it it will it will be a useful presentation even if you've seen this uh, because the idea is that we have written a uh, a set of puzzles uh, that is designed to teach you how to solve puzzles while you are solving puzzles. Um, uh, it's a little bit more experimental version than what we're doing here, uh, but it's based on some of the stuff that I've done uh, with students. Um, so it's going to be a bunch of fun. Um, yeah, and and maybe we will see some of you there. If not, I hope that you have a, a safe and pleasant hunt 2023. And one last thing, uh, I have a document of resources, um, which the uh, people who asked about slides, we're going to add the link to that in a little bit. Uh, but otherwise, there's some other very fascinating resources at that uh, site that I have just posted in the chat. And of course, the delay means I screwed up the timing, but it's OK. 20 seconds from now, everybody's going to get it. Yeah. And 20 seconds from now, they're going to be like, why are you saying that, Ben? All right. <laughs> OK, cool. Well, on that on that fun note of acknowledging the presence of time. It's been a couple hours. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned from it. Yeah, this is this has been a ton of fun. And if you have questions, feel free to put it in the comments. We'll probably still be checking them. At least I will because I'm. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Put it in like the comments of this video once it becomes a video, and we will do our best. Right. Have a good night, everyone. And that stops the stream. Okay, cool.